Wow. Uh, hey, it's Mike. It's it's like midnight here on the East Coast and uh, just woke up from a nap. Hey, boom, LGA. Just woke up from a nap and I'm, I'm procrastinating still. Cat's over there somewhere waiting for treats. And I just said, let me see who's up. So just say hi and I'll call your name out. I, I think I can see it here. This is a a fresh device, not a new device. I'm, I'm working on, from the iPad today, so it's a little different for me. Um, let me see if I can see the chat, because I saw something. I don't know what these buttons are, so forgive me if something goes weird. The highlight. Okay, so that's interesting. It's early. Everyone's up. Or uh, Esther, where are you on the East Coast or West Coast? Because a lot of people got to work tomorrow. Uh, share. All right, that button's weird. Okay, wait, if I hit this button, top chat, live chat. Okay, I see everybody now. Okay, so we're in business. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? Doctor, I talked to Charles. How's Dr. Woods? Uh, I talked to Charles this morning or this afternoon, and um, we've got some big plans for the summer, so... Uh, more to come on that. He wants to come on. We're talking about doing a game show. If you want to participate in a uh, trivia contest, that's like a live game show. That's what we're trying to figure out how to do that uh, for YouTube. So that'll that'll be in the next uh, few months. We'll figure out how to how to incorporate a uh, lot in the live stream. Invite guests on. We'll probably have to vet them first and then uh, do like a live trivia game show or something like that. So we'll figure that out. This is weird. I can't. Your chats are disappearing. It's uh, view chat, viewing options, top chat, live chat. Okay, I can see it now. Uh, hey, Mimi. Hey, Anthony. Hey, U.S. Champlain, Dr. Guy Hill. It still wants to dis... To, it still wants to... Uh, disappear it doesn't stay up there uh hey steven let me know if you can go live another time next week i'm gonna try you know the honest honestly i guess we're hanging out i'm not sure why i'm tearing up i'm just so happy to see you all um what's been happening i've been teaching and i, I think the last time i started i think the last time i did a, a live while i it was during the semester was um, last semester. So, you know, since then they've, they've given me an, an extra class. I'm teaching um, race and ethnicity in cinema, which is kind of, it's going pretty well so far. And um, the other class is independent film and video. So actually I should have brought those over. Um, when the cat comes over, I'll, I'll talk about Medea. I had the unenviable task of watching like 20 Tyler Perry movies in the course of two weeks to prepare for a lecture that nobody cared about. <laughs> it was like, who's Tyler Perry? I'm like, how can you, are you under a rock? And in my world, Tyler Perry is a very controversial figure as far as um, race and ethnicity goes and independent film and all that other stuff. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I busted my butt to give an informed opinion about Tyler Perry's body of work. And it fell on pretty much deaf ears. When will you get a chance to interview Billy Carson? Stephen, tell me, tell me who Billy Carson is. Fill me in on that one, cause I'm 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 I've had my head under a stone the last I'd say eight months. I'm I'm off the radar. The only thing that I've been paying attention to is uh, my friend Godfrey on Club Shay Shay, and I hope everybody checked that out. Give a thumbs up if you've seen Godfrey's Club Shay Shay. You're among a million people if you have. Um, put it online. I'm not sure what that means. Oh, the uh, the lecture on Tyler Perry? Is that what you mean? 
what historical black knowledge are you disseminating this evening? We're just hanging out because we're, we're all up, right? It's midnight. We got 55 people in the room, eight likes. Um, you know, I can talk about Tyler Perry a little bit. Yeah, Mimi. Um, but basically, we're just congregating. It's not necessarily, I'll answer any questions that you might have. Uh, but, um, and bring the cat over. Did you watch the Tyler Perry documentary? I did watch the Tyler Perry documentary. And it didn't have a lot of new information. What was interesting to me about it was the early years, like some seeing some of the early footage of him in church as a young person and, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, it's an authorized biography. It, you know, he definitely needs one. He's done so much. And I think it's it's important that a lot of people know what he's done because a lot of people take him for granted. So, uh, like, there's always going to be a Medea movie. There's always going to be a Tyler Perry. So the fact that he was involved with Maxine's baby and gave it an authorized view was was kind of cool. But um, you know, it didn't it didn't fascinate me. I'm not a huge Tyler Perry fan in that respect. Where I need a, a an authorized doc, you know, but. Uh, you know, I mean, what, what were your thoughts? Did you check it out? And I know some folks are in their pajamas. They don't feel like typing. So I'll try and keep the conversation flowing uh, while people are not necessarily typing. Um, but yeah, Tyler Perry, I had to watch a ton of stuff and build the collection up of Tyler Perry movies. Uh, is he even significant to anything other than pop culture? Hmm. Uh, are you excited about the Michael film coming? I think the Michael film could be good. Uh, I'm excited the fact that they, they cast his nephew in the role, which seems to be one of those kind of things that they do now with these um, biopics. Uh, they started it with Straight Outta Compton, you know, Ice Cube's behind me, you know, putting Ice Cube's son in to play himself. I think it's, it's going to be dope. I saw the play in New York on Broadway and it had me in tears. It was so, it was so incredible the, the way the story was put together and just seeing that young man, um, Miles Frost do his thing. You know, he really captured the energy it felt like he was channeling Michael Jackson. So I can only imagine what, with a, a decent budget, what they're going to do with the Michael Jackson biopic. Okay, let's see. These things, I wish I could figure out how to make these chats stay up. I got to hit the button and then look at it again. Because they're asking good questions. Mike, what's up with the River Band movie? River Band. Um, we're going to have some important news to share on River Band shortly. Some good things are happening. But right now, um, we've had two screenings. So far, we did one in Denton, Texas, which is very close to where the movie was filmed. And we did one in Philadelphia, which is where I'm at. And I'm hoping to book more screenings this summer as we go along and eventually we'll get to Blu-ray. Um, but we, we, I can't say any more right now because things are like there's paperwork involved at this point. But um, Riverbend will be coming to a screen near you um, between now and the film's 35th anniversary next February. I can say that much. Um, looking forward to the Chisel movie. I love Regina King. Uh, I think I saw the makeup and the hair. It was very convincing. Uh, I'm a big fan of the documentary that Charlotte Lynch did. So I, I'm sure that the uh, Shirley Chisholm movie is going to be pretty good. Uh, let's see, why, this stuff just doesn't stay up. So I gotta tap it to look at the questions. Valley Forge, okay, okay, I can scroll down too. Okay, cool, I got it working. Um, are you excited about the Michael film coming? It was very sanitized to his life, yes. Um, and disappeared again, wait, hang on. Having a little issue. This is my first time doing it with the um, iPad, so bear with me. I didn't see the Bob Marley movie. Um, it looked like a jukebox musical. I, you know, from the trailer, 
I mean, it's called One Love, right? Um, one of the things that Charles and I talk about all the time is how you can't tell certain stories about people unless there's a moment of reconciliation. And the movie certainly, Bob Marley is a world music figure, right? So, yeah, and his whole thing was about bringing people together. But why out of all the moments in his life, they have to center on the moment where he brought the, the two hands together to stop fighting is interesting to me, but uh, I have not seen the film. I don't know what about the performance. Did anybody see it? Bob Marley's movie was the guy who played Bob Marley. Was he good? I, I think he's British. I, it probably would have been nicer if they could have found a Jamaican to play the part. Um, Charles is in bed probably or up researching something insane. The last time we hung out on the phone, uh, we discovered a movie I picked up on the, um, I'm looking to see if it's over there. Um, I picked up a movie called The Story of Temple Drake on the Criterion sale recently. And I was watching it and Louise Beavers is in it. And there are a couple other black people that didn't get credit. So we spent about an hour watching the movie on OK Roo. The story of Temple Drake. And he was identifying some of the black actors that didn't get credit in the film for me. And I thought it was really fascinating. Uh, fine, what you just said about Bob Marley. I saw it. Bob Marley movie was shyster of a movie lit to deceive a happy-go-lucky narrative to peace white Europe. That's what I got from the trailer. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't want to say it. Very well put the way you wrote it. But that's... Basically, yeah, like, you know, code, when I say he's a world figure, you know, they're not making the movie, you know, designed to gross hundreds of millions of dollars just for black people. Now, I, I will say that I'm a big fan of the director, um, Rashad Ernesto Dr Green, I believe is the one who did it. Uh, he's got a brother who also makes movies, an NYU alum, and um, he did King Richard. So I, I like King Richard, you know, and I think he did a great job. You know, he, he's got a good career going for him, so. Oh, um, I see your heart. How do, how do I think, is that the heart? Mango man juice? Okay. Um, yeah, it keeps disappearing. I Chat viewing options doesn't give me the option to keep the chat up. So uh, we got 61 people up. It's, um, what time is it now? It's 1230 here on the East Coast. Um. Have you ever seen Devil in a Blue Dress? Have I ever seen Devil in a Blue Dress? It's sitting over here somewhere. Um, well, I'll just pull this one. Uh, Malcolm, that's as close as I can get to Denzel. On, you know, I have no order, by the way, to this stuff over here. Like I can't just, but yeah, Devil in a Blue Dress is a great movie. Uh, keeping it 100%. Yes, sir. It's spring solstice. Does anyone have a unique natural detox formula? Are you selling one, Nadoro? You're welcome to. We're demonetized, so I mean, don't go crazy. But if you have a business or something like that, you know, definitely put it in the chat. Let people know who you are. Do I have the movie Brother John? I have it on DVD. I would. That's one that's due for a Blu-ray or something a little bit better. That's a really good, underappreciated Sydney Poitier movie. Yeah, Brother John's great. Um, we were talking about Tyler Perry. I'll show you what I got tortured with in a minute. Why is your platform demonetized? Apparently, you're not supposed to put up content that you didn't create. Now, that wasn't always the case. So they didn't grandfather me in. Uh, you know, with the channel, I've been a YouTuber since 2007. Two years ago... Uh, and about 2016, we started with Dick Gregory and we built an audience around the idea of black empowerment. So, you know, as you can see, I'm a big collector. I started putting things that I thought were very, really rare up on the channel. At a certain point, you know, um, we were doing really well. And one day, but we're always under this con this constant threat of losing the whole channel due to the copyright strikes. So it was always a dangerous 
proposition, you know, to empower Black people versus getting shut down. One day I woke up and I got a letter from email from YouTube saying we're, we're not going to monetize you anymore. We're demonetizing the channel. Right. And the reason was reuse content. AI had detected that some of the content, they wouldn't tell me what video it was. That's what was so frustrating about it. They said, uh, you're breaking policy by having videos that are on other people's channels on your channel. Right. But we're, we're going to keep, we're not going to shut down the channel. We're going to keep you up. We're just not going to monetize you. Right. So we'll continue to make money off your content. We'll continue to get money off your views, but we were not, we're not going to split it with you anymore. So that, that threw me for a loop, put me in the hospital for a couple of weeks after a while, because it's frustrating. I mean, we've, we've got over a million subscribers, but right now we've got 56 people watching, right? So the math ain't mathin', but it's still a viable platform. I'm not going to change anything that's up now because I think it's really important that people have access to this information. But if you want to support Check us out on Real Black 2, which is the monetized channel now. It only has about 27, close to 30,000 subscribers over there. So we're nowhere near the numbers that we built up over the pandemic. But um, when you watch a video on Real Black 2, it does count towards the uh, monetization rates. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's, the, um, that's the story of my life. <laughs> That's the story of my life. But yeah, it's 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 been an interesting ride. But yeah, I wouldn't change anything. Um I'd change a few things, but I wouldn't change anything as far as helping to empower people through information. Um, yeah. <laughs> you got me laughing, Welch is great. I can't repeat that though. But you, yeah. Those Dick Gregory videos, they'll live forever, you know. Yeah, Donnie the Hating, uh, yeah. Being a nurse practitioner, okay. In kinds of addition to make bath and beauty luxury product. That sounds like a fun thing to do in your spare time, to just be creative like that. I mean, I, unfortunately, I'm, they resented you teaching. Well, I get it, I just wish Nandi, I get, I get why they did it. They, that's the key word. I get why they did it. They don't want everybody just ripping everybody off. They want brand identity. They want to protect themselves and all that other stuff. It's happened to Hezekiah News as well. Um, but you know, just be uniform with it. Don't, don't pay certain content creators who do the same thing and not pay others. Um, Study time works for me. Good. I'm glad you're up. Uh, this channel's helped me from sinking into a sunken place. Oh, that's great. That makes me feel good. Oh, sorry, just sent me some money. Yeah, Hezekiah News is in the same boat. Um, hey, Neil. Yeah. Yeah, I figured you'd be up because it's, it's that time. Cash out. Thank you. Takira. Wait. Wait Takarika? Takariko, thank you. I appreciate the love. Uh, have I seen Super Cops? I have Super Cops. I think I've seen it, but um, I haven't seen it in a long time. Dick Gregory docus are phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, maybe one day we'll we'll take the best of Dick Gregory and make it into something that uh, we can put in festival. Oh, there you are, Miss Styles. I love you. Thank you. One love. Um, you want to get into Tyler Perry? What? Ty, Takarika. Am I saying it right? Just give a thumbs up if I said it right. Miss Styles. What? What's the topic? What? What? What are we talking about right now? I can go. I can talk about movies. I can talk about Wild Man Steve, which is something I picked up a while ago. And it needs to go on the channel. The party record from the 70s. So, is that a stain? It's a smudge. But, um, 
Yeah, what's going on? Miss Musical Moise. Yeah. Yeah, I like playing the music. I'm teaching now. And AI got faster. So they blocked all those old videos of us listening to music together. They're all slowly getting chopped down because of, of copyright. So, uh, facts my boy has. You talking about Hezekiah? My man Hezekiah? I'm going to listen to Dick Gregory documentary. I got to talk to his son. Um, but yeah, maybe we can build the best of the of Dick Gregory over the summer because I'm going to have a little bit of time um, to make a project. So I'm thinking about Dick Gregory. Okay, cool. I want to know you appreciate you. I appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to get more stuff up. The most recent thing that went up was a really rare video. I, I wish I, I wish people understood how difficult it was to find this um, John Hendrick Clark video that just went went up last month. But I was really excited when I did find it. Uh, why wasn't Dick Gregory passing? Never talked about unless I wasn't looking. I think we did do a live after he passed away. But I mean, we're talking about what, what was it, 2017? So forgive me if I if I didn't give love. I mean, we put his entire funeral service up on the channel in parts. Um, you know, I mean, the man made made a big difference in my life. And, you know, if anybody feels um, slighted by my lack of appreciation or seeming lack of appreciation, it's, it's unfounded. I love Dick Gregory. Um, I'm looking for interns for the summer. Um, either remote or in person because uh, Riverbend is coming to fruition and, and uh, there's some other projects that I want to get done in the three months that I'll have off um, from school. So I'm looking for stuff, I'm looking for people to help. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to sc scroll back. What do I teach and what grade level? I teach at Temple University uh, and I teach... Uh, Film and media arts. Uh, okay, let me see. Appreciate this channel so much. Thank you. Do you have any apprentices working with you on projects, on programming projects? Not directly, because we're kind of like not in that realm right now. I'm trying to build a video label. And that's, that's my main focus, is trying to get Riverbend onto Blu-ray. That's like my big mission right now. And if you don't know what Riverbend is, it's a movie that's on the channel that we've discovered prints of, and we want to get that restored and, and made more available in time for its 35th anniversary. Uh, when is his birthday? We can do another one then. When When is Dick Gregory's birthday? It's, um, I know when he passed. Um, I always put a tag up on his birthday. Uh, it's coming up. It's in the fall, I believe. So can somebody look that up? Because I'm, I'm just, I don't want to get too distracted. But when is Dick Gregory's birthday? Uh, plus all the great commenters like Tiff. Is Tiff in the building? Who's in the building? Do I have any mods here? Oh, yeah, I went to Temple. Yeah, Temple's great. Um, have I done anything on the Doctrine of Discovery? I We've talked about the Doctrine of Discovery for those... Who don't know, oh, October 12th. Yeah, that's what I thought. Thank you. Um, I knew it was in the fall. And then he passed away in, what, December? Something like that. Um, do I have a snippet of that project? If so, put the link up in your Cash App account. Let me see. Can I put a chat in? The Cash App is Cash App Real Black. I don't know if they're letting me type anything. In here again, this is my first time using the, the iPad for chat. Why didn't you include Lori Lieberman's? Oh, because because I'm racist and I try it. What, what's interesting, a lot of people make suggestions past August 19th. Wow. It felt like it was later in the year. So he was, he was coming up on his next birthday and, and he didn't quite make it. Wow. Um, thank you for that. Um, What's interesting, he, uh, the references to the who did it better, 
um, segments, which um, we we put uh, the original song, usually, generally, the original version of a song, and then the cover version of the song, and you listen to it, and there's little description of the song and the history behind the song. So it might be like Sadie by the Spinners. Oh, here's Molly coming. Um, Sadie by the Spinners. And then R. Kelly's version after it. And then you get to vote in the comment section who did it better, you know? So, but typically because I'm interested in black music, I won't always put, a, now she's scratching the, she never uses the scratching post unless I've got the camera propped up on it. So now Molly's down there scratching, wondering what's going on. Can you want to get up here? Oh, my paw's stuck. Well, she'll be coming up in a second. Um, I missed a couple comments. Fool with the cat. Why should we free out of color? Did I miss something? No, it was just, that was just the random. <laughs> okay, I, that was the random. I could have picked up. Um, I could have picked up any any person, but I just happened to mention R. Kelly. So, so who did it better? I I try like you know it'd be so easy to put like. Um, I mean the only the only person that I might put up would be um, the Bee Gees or Hall and Oates or something like that. But, you know, like typically if there's a white artist who did a song and then it was covered by a black artist, like I won't do that. Like I won't put Seals and Crofts, Summer Breeze next to the Isley Brothers because it might incite a riot, you know. But it also might help bring more crossover views to the um, to the channel. So I don't know. Um, say sagging backwards, please. Real black. Sagging backwards. Okay, whatever. According to the channel description, yes. All right. Uh, let's see. It's easy. Felipe Wynn is greater than... Yeah, most people like the originals on those things. Hey, Molly. You ready? You ready for Molly? All right. So we got... Her favorite treats. Come on. She's afraid. Come on. Come on. You gonna jump? Oh, okay. She wants proof. You, you smell them? Okay. All right, you're messing up the show. You should see her. She's staring at me from down, down below. But I'm trying to get her to come up so I can show show you, Molly. Molly, she's being tough. People want to see you. Um, let me see. You yuck! You really inside a riot and departure from exes from your brand. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, like. Um, I've heard some really beautiful covers of How Deep Is Your Love. So I was, I was tempted to put How Deep Is Your Love up there. But, um, just had a beef for Burr's version is constantly seen as the original. Well, that's true. I think in the description, I mentioned that the Lori Lieberman thing. But, uh, yeah, we put the Fuji's version of, um, Killing Me Softly next to Roberta Flax. So, uh, yeah. How many years do you think that you can continue to use your disc because the technology usually wipes out other tech? It's already happening, Neil. Molly, come on. Do you, do you want a treat? Okay, she's being greedy. She's not trying to get up here. Um, I think that the... The, the medium is stable enough and I, I take good enough care of my DVDs that they'll continue to play. Now, I've, I've come across some burned DVDs, things that I burned like 20 years ago that won't play anymore. And that scares me. That frightens me. 
there was recently an article put out about um, hard drives and how they're failing and a lot of independent creators. Okay, I'll show the cat. I think she's ready. Molly, come on. Just for a minute. Just for a minute. Oh, come on. She's stuck on my pant leg. Uh, so hard drives are failing. A lot of independent creators, things, people are not studios and they have hard drives. You got to say hi before you come. Uh, hang on. Look. Eating treats. She has no care in the world. Hey, Elizabeth. So, um, yeah, so my biggest concern is less about the movies themselves because, I mean, what's going to happen eventually? Everything that I spent money on years ago to get on DVD is going to end up on 4K. And no one's going to want the DVD anymore. The DVDs... You know, like if you try and trade a, a Blu-ray or a 4K in now, you're lucky to get $3 for it. You know, even the rarest ones, people just, you know, they just don't want to pay. So, you know, basically what's good is, you know, I have a huge collection and it's really useful to have what I'm teaching, because it's like having a wine cellar, I can go through stuff. Pardon me. Wow, that was weird. Um, I can go through my collection and find clips and things. I don't have to rely on streaming. To, to Like, if I want Tyler Perry, I can go to my Tyler Perry section in my in my collection and, and start looking at stuff. I don't have to rely. And a lot of Tyler Perry stuff is just not available unless it's on Netflix. Um, his more recent work. I mean, for whatever reason, you know, piracy is what the reason is. You know, a lot of Tyler Perry stuff just isn't available to stream. So I love my collection. It's just unfortunate that it's going to lose value before it gains value. Um, I'm losing track. I'm losing track of stuff. But um, yeah, the obsolescence is going to be as the technology increases in terms of visual quality from DVD to Blu-ray to 4K, maybe eventually it'll get to 8K and, and they'll just keep remastering these things. Um, you know, a lot of people feel like 4K is the limit because that's about as much as your eye can read. Um, and it's very, very close to what film projects when you go to the movie theater. Hey, Voyeur, made it, okay. Some DVD players from older computers play. Plug in the DVD players as long as it's the same size. Thanks for going to type killing softly. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, we're up late. I, I took a nap, so now I can't sleep, voyeur. So I decided to go live maybe for another half hour or so just to see who's up and, and what we're talking about. But um, Molly's here. Let me see if I can see sitting over there. Say hello. Say hi. Uh, okay. Enough. <laughs> uh, did anybody watch Godfrey? My friend Godfrey on Club Shay Shay. Uh, the DVD has director's commentary. Streaming services don't offer that. Most most streaming services don't offer the commentaries. That's true. Um. It's 12 where I am. Yeah, it's about um, almost 1 o'clock here. Cheddar Cat. But um, I don't have to work tomorrow, so, you know, that's why I'm up. Um, going to Bruce Bruce. Bruce Bruce is in town. I've never seen him live, so we got tickets at Punchline Philly, ladies and gentlemen. If you're in Philadelphia, go meet me at the Bruce Bruce show tomorrow. Uh, the early show, I'll be there. Yeah, I, I thought, yeah, Godfrey's great. He deserves all the love. I mean, 
what what fascinates me, I mean, they they just deplatformed him on Instagram, but he had tons of followers, and they just shut him down, and he had to restart over. But um, you know, at this point, he should be hosting a Saturday Night Live. I think you know he's done enough, and he'd be amazing if he did a guest host there. Hey, Bing Huncho, and Cheddar Cat. Okay, I see you. Hey, I'm going to I'm going to put it over to Molly for a second while I reach down and get the Tyler Perry's. You going to stay here? I'm just going to get you to stay. If you let me stay. I'm going to let her dig in. All right. Only for you. down there. There you go. She got a couple. My belly. Get in me belly. You two shut people down for nonsense. Do you have all your content backed up on a server? I sure don't. <laughs> I sure don't. Um, I'm like every other creator. I'm hoping that these hard drives hang on. Um, I mean, most things are backed up in two places that are important to me, but not everything. All right. So this is, I was talking about Voyeur. I was talking about class and how I worked for two weeks to prepare a lecture on Tyler Perry. So I had to watch, well, this I didn't watch. It's still sealed. I had to go through all my Tyler Perry movies and come up with a conclusion. Uh, that's not good. You can even back it up to a cloud service. He has a lot of money, though. That's the problem. I mean, I, literally, I have, I've been making movies more than half my life. Um, since I was 13, I've been making movies. And... Since 2000, I've been making digital movies. So that's a lot of hard drives. It's a lot of hard drives over the years. I've only had about five fail on me. And um, I don't know what was on them. I don't know what was on them, but, um, you know, knock wood. You know, I don't want to be... You know, you know, like I said, you know, most of the stuff that I made that's important to me, I've backed up. But, but you know, the server, the cloud server, and all that stuff, raid, all that other stuff, it doesn't work. Um, and then every year, they take good equipment and they make it obsolete. So I've got to, you know, I've got to keep old computers around just so I can access older files. You know, so this, oh my God, this could be a whole, don't get me started. This is such a waste of time for me. Now, I know some people like this. I can't get into it. And that's, that's where me and Spike are aligned, you know, but, um, you know, if Charles were here, he'd say Spike is no different than, um. Tyler Perry in, in some respects. So happy birthday, Spike Lee, by the way. It was birthday. 67 years old yesterday. We should, we should do like um, the Today Show used to and give people celebrity birthday shout outs. Um, let's see. I really uh, got to figure out how to see this thing. External hard drives? Yeah, tons of external hard drives. It's ridiculous. I mean, and they're, and they're heavy. So, oh, Venezuela's in the building. Hey, C Cesar. Um, cats are so gentle. My dog went out there. <laughs> yeah, Molly, Molly's a little slow. Uh, on, I'm like, here, here's all the treats in the world. <laughs> and she, 
She went in slow. Why not use LTO tapes? I don't know. Your raid system is good. Why did you start a Real Black 2 channel? I answered that question earlier, but I mean, basically they demonetized Real Black 1. And I felt, the first thing I felt was offended because they were profiting off my content and not paying me. So the first thing I did was take as much of the stuff that I owned that was original to me and moved it over to Real Black 2. And I begged people for a month Please subscribe to Real Black 2. Please subscribe to Real Black 2. And out of a million of subscribers, a few thousand viewers, we got about 25,000, 27,000 people to subscribe to Real Black 2. And that got us monetized over there, but it's not nearly the numbers, you know. And that, that led to a great deal of frustration for me because, um, you know, I helped build a, a big following but then when I go live, what do we have 82 people up right now out of, you know, tens of thousands of people that theoretically got a notification. So, you know, so it didn't it didn't quite grow the same way. And then in retrospect, I looked at it and I said, well, you know, I'm not really putting new content up on Real Black 2. It really is archival and not everybody's into that, you know, so I kind of get it. But at the same time. It frustrates me that this platform, this might be everybody's favorite. I did a poll and this is everybody's favorite Medea movie for some reason. Um, yeah, One Mile From Heaven was on the channel for a minute. I took, when we were under threat from Warner Brothers, um, I took One Mile From Heaven down. I took anything that was corporate controlled off Real Black One because I didn't want to wake up to a litany of copyright strikes I could not get reversed. So, um, you know, it's like fishing. You throw the rod out and then you got to pull it back in a little bit, right? So, you know, during the pandemic, we might have been a little reckless as far as what we were putting up. You know, I was posting pretty much daily anything that I felt was rare and and then we found the correction. So right now, the channel that you're watching now is pretty much the pyramid of um, black excellence, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. Oh, we're talking about devolving. I just don't understand at this point, Tyler Perry devolving instead of evolving. Well, it seems like he's trying to do more ambitious work to a certain extent. Like he knows where his bread is buttered, which is in, he's doing these thrillers right now. But he also has this movie with Kerry Washington, which may be a great movie or it could be a, a horrible movie. I can't tell, but it's based on a true story. It's a period piece. Um, it's, you know, so I'm not sure. It's difficult to promote Real Black 2 because you're using Real Black 1 to do it and YouTube has already decreased your viewership. Absolutely, yeah. I, I definitely feel like we're being shadow banned. And, um, you know, if I was if I was live on Real Black 2, there might be three people watching, you know, so I'd much rather have a conversation with more people and not get paid for it and take more risks even than to um, try to get more views up on Real Black 2. Now that might change, Neil, over the summer uh, as we figure out how to utilize Real Black 2 as a way to do more live chats and and different things. One thing I've been doing is putting like little samples of the video on Real Black 1 and then saying, hey, if you want to see the whole video, go over to Real Black 2. Now, the conversion rate on that is negligible. Most people, they just click. They, if they're watching a, a video at all, they're watching the first few minutes of it and then they're clicking away anyway. So we're not really galvanizing audience in that way, but at least if people do want to see the whole video, it is available and it's monetizable if it's over on Real Black 2. Um, the company that claimed the copyrights also sued Google. It's some important Miami business guy. I recently got a copyright strike for a Venezuelan movie that no one knows called La Impresa Perdona on Memento de la Cora. Yeah, so it's... 
it's interesting. I mean, they're trying. It used to be a wild west, and that's where we, that's where we grew. Um, it was a wild west show for a long time, and a lot, a lot of independent voices. It challenged the status quo. Now it is the status quo. It's very corporatized, and there's big money everywhere floating around on YouTube. So. Um, we had our day. I'm doing my best to maintain as a result. I preview for cellular film rather than digital. Am I crazy? No, you're not crazy. But um, the convenience factor, I think, outweighs the celluloid, you know. Uh, what does music have, not playing music have to do with him needing to go live on that channel? Well, what happens when I play music, it gets demonetized automatically because uh, the copyright claimants from the songs automatically get paid if I use somebody else's music. Now, the problem is that it, they can block the feed automatically if I play a song for too long that is content ID, they'll just stop the whole feed. And that's why we stopped playing music in the first place. Um, we used to play music every morning when I wasn't working. Uh, and we built a, a nice, you know, comfortable following, Voyeur, Neil. Um, not sure who else is part of the Breakfast Club is in the, um, or Breakfast Clue, Crew, I should say. I don't want to say Breakfast Club. Or Coffee Clutch, you know. Uh, or Doctor and Discovery, right. Let me, let me finish going through these things and then I'll explain my understanding of Doctor and Discovery with um, with you guys. Yeah, I did not pay full price for this piece of garbage. Um, Tyler's made a lot of bad movies. Most of the movies are average at best, but they're entertainment for a lot of people. And um, then you have the question, that was the last one I have here. Um, then you have the question, is it coonery? Is he capitalizing off of stuff and then uh, uh, off of our our ignorance and it's a it's a, becomes a complicated question because the, you also have to factor in code switching tyler starts off in theater and you know so automatically things are broader and 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 for a very select audience you know so then it, it, it becomes that age-old question is it coonery or is it a black person using language that other black people are comfortable with in open company, right? So, you know, clearly if Tyler Perry, if Tyler Perry were white and he put out Meet the Browns, black people would shut him down instantly. Like, how dare you? You know, but the fact that he's black, it gives him cover. And then that, that feeds into the bamboozle that's over here too, because I was studying Bamboozle. I hadn't seen Bamboozle in a while. Oh, it's a signed copy, Spike Lee. But um, in the movie Bamboozled, he talks about the Mantan Doctrine, which is what the white publicist tells Damon Wayans what to say in order to protect himself from having a modern day minstrel show on television and basically the last stage of the of the doctrine is hey i'm black too so you know how can i be racist <laughs> you know and that so that's that's always the cover and and the establishment uses that doctrine as well when they want to get certain ideas out there they'll get black people to be the cover for it, you know, so, you know, you don't always have to be the creator of it to, to get caught up in that kind of stuff, you know, so, you know, a lot of, a lot of stuff that probably shouldn't have gotten made gets made because they, they find a black person to, to agree to make it or be, be the face of it at least, you know, but it's still white dollars to dictate and determine what we get to see. 99.9% .9 of the time, the only 1% is when Real Black decides that it wants to put Riverbend out on Blu-ray. That's the 1%. 
And um, that's a movie that more people need to see, and it's a, it's a very important to me. And we'll be doing fundraisers and things like that in the future. Hey, Simply Deep, we're just hanging out. Any questions? Oh, Doctor of Discovery. So Doctor of Discovery is something that the Catholic Church put out, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Church put it out, basically said, you know, when they, in the 1600s, not when boats became more available, transportation became available where you could go across the sea and explore the earth and see what else was going on on the earth. They said, oh, well, all everybody but us is primitive and, you know, we give, the church gives people permission to go out and just take over the, under the name of God, take over the planet. And we've been living under that sort of manifest destiny, destiny doctrine of discovery concept ever since. And it's led to rapes and pillages and deaths and genocides of all kinds of cultures and people and languages and all that kind of stuff, right? Did I get it? Did I, did, I, did I win the quiz, Doctor and Discovery? Um, hey, Janeiro. Yeah, I just woke up from a nap myself. That's why That's why we're on. Um, trying to see. see. Well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna repeat what you just said there. What part of Philadelphia? I, I was in North Philly for a while. I'm, out, I'm on the outskirts now um, in Wilmington. Uh, what others? Oh, similar to Bamboozled? If you haven't seen American Fiction or Hollywood Shuffle or Putney Swope, those are the cousins of Bamboozled. But American Fiction just won the Oscar for Best Screenplay. And if you haven't seen that, you're in for a treat. I mean, some people at this point, there's a backlash, like the expectations are a little high for it. But I, I enjoyed the ride. I thought it was really cool. I, I, I liked American Fiction a lot. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. American Fiction, if you like Bamboozled and you want something a little more palatable, a little more accessible, American Fiction is the movie. But... You know, you can you can switch over now and watch Hollywood Shuffle for free on like Tubi. So, you know, but if you've never seen Hollywood Shuffle, uh, that's that's the touchstone for all of it. Well, you know, for all everything that everybody's talking about now, Hollywood Shuffle is is the is the root. But the the predecessor to all of that is a movie called Putney Swope by Robert Downey Sr. All right, I'm trying to catch up with these chats, but it keeps disappearing. It won't let it stay. It won't let it stay up. So I got to go back and scroll. Uh, second channel is monetized. This one isn't. I'm trying to help bring in more income. If more people live on, if more people join the live on the second channel, it should help grow that channel too. I completely agree with that, Neil. And we could also do super chats on Real Black 2, it's just, it, it just doesn't galvanize enough audience at this point for for me to be able to do it that way. Um, oh, we have a Patreon as well. I, I don't necessarily make a lot of content for Patreon, but if you want to support by spending $3 a month, uh, Real Black has a Patreon, yes. Um, enjoy Van Boozle. Hey, Elizabeth, yes. Um, yeah, I'm going to try and do more lives. Uh, you know, it's just a little overwhelming this semester, trying to teach two classes. I got to do at least two, if not three, lectures a week. And um, it requires a lot of reading and planning and research as a result. And I'm still, I think anybody who teaches knows that you never stop preparing for the next class. Um, let me see, Simply Deep, I'm doing good. Loving the documentaries and movies you have up on your channel. Thank you. What do you need to sleep so soon? Uh, what are the movies similar to Bamboozled? Uh, oh, you're in Oxford Circle? I know where Oxford Circle is. There's a lot of Dunkin' Donuts in the Northeast. When I, when I think of Oxford Circle, I think of Wawa and Dunkin' Donuts. How's, how's that for a reference? I want your opinion on the Simply Deep. What's your opinion on movies that show men in embarrassing situations 
That's a loaded question. The way you wrote it is loaded. You already know the answer to that. Why would I like something like that, the way you phrased it? The show men in embarrassing situations that'll get you made fun of and how you would like to handle those situations in real life. Are you talking about social media or movies? You know, um, you know, social media, we make fun. It seems like anybody who, anything that leaks on social media that's like that, somebody wanted attention. Because, like, if something, like, if I fell off a ladder and it happened to film it, I wouldn't put that stuff up and have people watch it forever, you know? I mean, did you see, this is a slight aside, but I think it could lead to some commentary, so I'll bring it up. The woman who got arrested and they put the body cam footage up, did you see that? Because she was um, diddling with herself on the beach, it was a public beach and she got reported for indecent exposure, right? So I'm scrolling through my uh, through my feed on YouTube and the first video that pops up is, you know, like 19 million views, you know? So how can you not watch it? Woman caught on beach, right? So I finished watching that and the next video that comes up, woman, who was caught mass, I don't want to use the word, on beach, kills herself. And that, that gets like 6 million views, you know? So I would, you know, if I, if I had any control over my image, I wouldn't, I mean, she clearly had no control over that and it destroyed her career or her life. She she had no options in her mind but to kill herself. So I think that's a danger, you know? And, you know, but too often I wake up in the morning, I put on Instagram, and, and a lot of stuff is, um, it hurts my soul to see some of the stuff that people do just to get attention or gets reposted just because people want to get a click or a like, you know? To be or not to be. Uh, how shuffles a must see. Black Dynamite. Yeah, I love Black Dynamite. Ethnic Notions. That's a touchstone. That's that's one of the first movies I saw. Um, well, actually, not. Cesar, if you like Ethnic Notions, there's one called Color Adjustment that I think is much better. It's better produced and it's more interesting. But um, Marlon Riggs was great. And he, he left us too soon. Hey, Carnita. But a man from Ghana. I just hung out with a guy from Ghana the other night. So I might be going out to Ghana at some point in life. Am I in New York? And I'm in Delaware right now as we speak. Charles, I talk to Charles every day. Charles Woods, I talk to him every day. Anyone here in the Abbott Elementary? That's a good question. I love when I, I don't watch it religiously. Personally, I mean, I know this is a question for everybody, but Abbott Elementary is one of the best shows on. It's very entertaining, and they've mastered the format. I mean, basically, it's um, The Office, but at a school. But she's so good at it, and the cast is so good. Um, I really like that show. Wawa and Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> Mia Culpa was a weird movie. Yeah, well, it was overwritten. You know, I don't want to give away anything, any of the twists, but I'm like, who does that? You know, Tyler, come on. I know you want, I want, I know you want people to talk about the movie, but can we apply some logic to the characters? Develop the characters enough to the point where you, they, the plot doesn't dictate their actions. It's insane. Um, let's see. Social media clickbait. Yep. Um, white female police officer, 23, six officers were 500K because she said she was groomed. Wow, that's messed up. Dark side when it came to his project for a while, started with color girls. Think he's trying to escape the good guy image. It's not working good. Yeah. Yeah, Tyler. 
I mean, I identified three, maybe four types of movies that Tyler Perry makes. He makes the Medea movies, clearly. He makes family comedies and dramas like um, The Family of Praise and Daddy's Little Girls. And then he does these weird thriller movies that are just, they go off the rails. They're like the most twisted soap operas you can imagine. You know, so... Great movies, the uncles. I love Hill Harper. How come I don't know the uncle for your Hill Harper made some really good movies back in the day. Oh, Charles's recent interview. Oh, you watched the live? Yeah, we did. We did the live thing. He was on fire that night. Um, do you think Tyler needs to hire some writers? He won't hire writers. He got in trouble with writers. Um. I think, yeah, if he passed the ball a little bit. I mean, the problem I have with Tyler is he acts like he's going to live forever. And then you wonder, well, what happens to him and the brand if he doesn't bring other people up under it? I mean, he seems intent on being a novelist. Like his, like he, he, wants, the, he wants it to die when he dies. Uh, which channel... Was the interview on? We did a live stream, and I shot it with my phone. I think this is what Neil is talking about. And we showed a movie called Savages, Servants, and Specialty Acts we did that's only available through Patreon. And uh, we had a discussion afterwards, and Charles Skyped in, and um, we live streamed it. So if you go, I think it's like Charles Woods Q&A. Let me see if I can find it. On the phone. Oh, Molly's asleep. She didn't wake up. Appreciate the cash apps, everybody. But um, I might be in Boston this summer. I can say that much. If you're in Boston, you know, look out for me. Uh, but yeah, let me let me check here what where the live is at, and then I can tell you where to look for it. It's um content live. It's called Real Black One is Live, and it's from three weeks ago, and it runs an hour and two minutes. So, I don't know. You probably can't see that. Oh, maybe you can. It's, it's that one with my dirty fingernail. Real Black One is Live. Or if, if it's backwards to you, it says Real Black One is Evil. <laughs> uh... Yeah, he he was on fire that night, so um, we're proud of that. Uh, Sitting in Bars with Cake is an excellent movie. Yar Shahidi. Okay, let, let me let me screen cap that so I remember to look for it. Um, Tyler Perry spent all his intellectual currency. I think Tyler Perry does. He's like Jay-Z in the sense that he dumbs down his content. I mean, when you listen to Tyler Perry talk, he's clearly a super intelligent human being. But he knows his audience. And he serves the lowest common denominator often. And he knows, he grew up watching soap operas and things. And that's the kind of stories he likes to tell. You know, so then they're, they're not overly complicated or, or deep. I mean, when he goes deep um, with a movie like Daddy's Little Girls, I mean, it's still kind of simplistic the way it ends. Nobody comes to see him. You know, I think, you know, unfortunately, in my opinion, his Tyler Perry's best movie is probably his least successful commercially, which is Daddy's Little Girls. You know, so, um, I mean, that's my take on that, that thought. And we're over an hour now. How, are people still up? I can talk for a little bit more. I'm not on a breath. Jasmine Blues wasn't that bad. Jasmine's Blues, but... All right, Jessica, but shouldn't Jasmine's Blues been a, a little bit better? You know, I know he worked on it for 13 years. He It was something he really wanted to do well. Debbie Allen was a part of it. Great cast, all that other stuff. But, you know, he decides to shoot it in 13 days, you know, and I think, you know, he should bite the bullet spend a little more time and money to make a better better quality film, you know. Oh, what do I mean when he got in trouble with writers? Uh, well, he hired writers and they sued him. 
because he wasn't giving them credit or something like, or he they were trying to unionize or he, you know, he had for his TV shows he hired writers and then they were, um, I've, I'm trying to think back. They tried to sue him basically, you know. Hey, MG Massey, wow, give it up for MG Massey. It's good to see you, love. I hope you're doing better. I shouldn't say better. Doing well. It was rushed. It said it took him 27 years. 27 years to write it and two weeks to film it. And you have all the money in the world. Most people shoot movies in two weeks because they have to, not because they want to. And I think that's an issue when you have things that are a little more ambitious like that. You know, he should take more time with them. But um, maybe he's got a short attention span or something. Jay-Z has dumbed down his music since his first albums. I've been calling him lazy for 20 years due to his weak-ass efforts on songs. Yeah, but, you know, I mean, stupid is as stupid does. Not to say anybody watching here is, got, is on the spectrum, but um, there's something to be said for knowing what to do to appeal to the the masses. It's just unfortunate when you're talking about black people that you have to get into some dumb stuff, you know, as a result. Um, Kev on stage, Churchy's all right. Okay, I know a little bit about Kev on stage. I'm not a, not a whole lot. Alfrugan Lista, Alfrugan Lista is here too. I, I'm not liking the... I, I like the iPad thing because it's bigger, but I got to figure out how to keep the chat up so I can see it as we go. It keeps fading away. I don't know if it does that on your side. Hey, so we got a family going. We got the family here, the the coffee clutch. Miss the music boys. Yeah, I miss them too. But, you know, I've been teaching. So, you know, it's... I'm making up, I'm, you know, they're not paying me as well as I needed to, but um, it's it's supplanted. I think that's the word. I'm a university professor now. I think I can get away with using the word supplanted. The resources that you guys so generously offered, you know, but I will be coming back in the fall probably to fundraise for Riverbend. So, you know, it's not that we don't need money right now. I mean, I, I definitely need as much support as possible. But if you're planning to give, wait until we do the Riverbend uh, Kickstarter. That's a Scrabble world. <laughs> Supplanted. You have two peas, right? You're lucky if you get two peas on Scrabble. You say, what? What can I? What can I put up that has two peas? What are, supple? Well, supple and supplanted are the same word. What other two Ps? If you had two Ps, bubble? You can't you can't spell bubble. What what other words? If you had two Ps and L and an E, but no S, what letter are you looking for next? So you can spell a word. And get away with it. It's bubble, tuple, lup, limple, lapple, lapel. You could get lapel out of that. Did manage to get confirmation that Patreon should still be sending my. Yeah. Oh, I appreciate everybody who's so supporting on Patreon. I try. I try to do something at least once a month on Patreon, but it's apply. Good one. Um, purple. Wow, we got some thinkers. I didn't even think about purple. Two P's and L and an E purple. I think you win. I think you win. I think purple is the answer. CBC voter, give give it up. Purple. Didn't I didn't even think about that. You could play you could, appliance. Appliance. That's kind, that's very complicated. Okay. Two P's and L and an E, appliance, okay? A Paul, Apple, a Paul. 
You're throwing your E away, though. Paul, that's good. People, yeah. I didn't think about people. All right, purple people. Appliance. App pay? That's not a word. Is voyeur, are you making something up? I've never heard. I've lived 54 years on this earth. I've never heard the word app pay. Happy. Well, you got to use the L and the E. You're making up, you have two P's. I'm looking, I'm waiting for more. Tipple, is that a word? Applause, that's a good one. Yeah, I think Voyeur is stretching that one. I've I've never heard that word. I'd have to fight him over um, over the table. Ape means absolute obsolete. Now you got me googling. Did I learn something today? Did everybody learn? Because I've never heard of ape. I'm I'm go I'm I'm gonna test that one there. Ape a p p a y. Obsolete, satisfied, content. Okay. To pay, to satisfy or appease. Who knew? All right, but you still didn't have the L and the E. So it's a moot point. Moot. M O O T. Double P's. Oh, well, now now we're getting vulgar. Nipples, sipples, nipples. I'm into, I'm too into 420 to try thinking. <laughs> okay, at least you're honest. Um, that's a $50 word. Apple Jacks. Well, see, Caesar, now you're stretching... You're stretching the words out on the Scrabble here. So that, that's that's a concept. Tipple is a drink. Brits use it more than we do. Okay, did I question Tipple? I don't even remember. I've never heard Tipple, but it sounds like a word. I mean, ape doesn't sound like any word I'd ever think to use. Um, I've never heard it in a sentence. And, you know, again, 54 years for you. I've never heard anybody say, I pay. I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right. Moat the mute. I got the triple word. Yeah, Applejack. I went away to answer the phone. It seems like the chat room has gone mad. What's going on? Oh, we're playing Scrabble. So we need another word. So, okay, so if we're going to play Scrabble... And somehow Voyeur has gotten away with Ape, right? So then we can take the Y from Ape and connect it. So if we if we have Ape and we're going to connect the Y to another word, what what's the next word that we connect? Yappy. Well, you, you you've already used up your P's and your Yodel, okay, all right, so, okay, so Yodel works. Yodel, Yodel works. Oh, did I see Origin, Ava DuVernay's film? Uh, yeah, I did see Origin. We, I, I made it a required viewing, extra credit assignment for class. It's a, it's a good movie. Um, it didn't go far enough for me, but I, I think it's the nature of the text that the film is based on. You know, for those who don't know, uh, Ava DuVernay made a movie called um, Origin based on Isabel Wilkerson's book, Cast. And on the plus side, it's got everybody talking and thinking about the concept of race in a new way, right? That's what the book did. It's problematic to me because in the culture that I live in, it's clearly the problem is this concept of white supremacy. 
Now, you can't go to the Ford Foundation and say, hey, I want $38 million to accuse the problem that needs to be solved in this world is let's get over this idea of white being supreme. That's not going to happen. But you can go there and you can say, I want to create a world that understands each other better. It's a global phenomenon. It's not just racism that we have to deal with. It's this idea of caste. And caste is the root foundation that covers all, it's the skeleton of all of the hate that exists on this earth. And I want to expose that. And that, so that's what they set out to do. That's what the book sets out to do. And that's what the movie sets out to do. You know, from my perspective, it's a little, um, I don't want to use the word problematic, but hold that word problematic. We might be able to play Scrabble with that. Um, basic, basically, from my perspective, you know, in teaching the race and ethnicity course, you don't want to bite the hand that feeds you, right? That's rule number one. Don't bite the hand that feeds you, right? So if somebody's going to give you money to tell a story about race and hate on the planet, you're not, you're not going to target one specific race as being the culprit, right? And, you know, and, it, and, and by all... In all fairness, it probably is a lot of truth to cast because you can go places where people look the same and there's still a form of hate or still a hierarchy that's in place. But from my perspective, if you look deep enough into it, it's it's colonization, it's coloring, it's color. It's, it's color. The hierarchy is built on skin tone in the majority of places, or at least the mentality of skin tone, because you have to think about how many places have been colonized. And then we go back to the doctrine of discovery, right? You know, like I wasn't there before colonization, so I don't know what the dynamics were prior to imperialism. But it seems to me that the majority of the earth is divided on a spectrum that has something to do with European ideas, right? And that, that was my breakdown. After I saw Origin, I'm like, yeah, you're being a little disingenuous by not picking out a bad guy. But I get it. You know, I watched the We Are the World documentary and I understand when you put these messages out there, you don't want to divide people. You want to you want people to to feel good. But I, 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 I and I think that Origin does a great job of having people think and talk and discuss about it later. And you know, it's a beautiful looking film and it's well acted and it's the music and all that is tremendous. And it's, it's, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I still hold that Ava's best film, in my opinion, is Middle of Nowhere. But, you know, she's done, in the last 13 years, she's done a tremendous job of making people think and talk about certain issues. And she gives you images that stay with you forever. But I, you know, I just have to disagree with the the take on it. I mean, the, the lead character is in a in a interracial relationship, so she's not in a position to say, "Hey, my husband's the devil." She's trying to look around that and solve it. And I and I just think in the process, she, in my opinion, again, my opinion, um, the obvious thing is imperialism and and colonization and what that's what the damage that that's done to the world this idea that somehow god intended for certain people of a certain hue to control things and not listen to other people you know so 
That's, I mean, did anybody else see Origin? What, what was your take on it? And that's my honest two cents, you know. I would say that to her, uh, to Ava's face, you know. I mean, Ava's genius. Ava is a genius. But um, you don't bite the hand that feeds you. And if you're taking money from people, you can't call them out on this shit. Hey, this is past your bedtime. Good, good seeing you. Yeah, hey, Christopher. Yeah. Yeah, I took a nap earlier, so... And I don't have to work tomorrow, so I said, let me jump on. Um, ancient problems, power chips, rich people. Yeah, who controls everything, our way of thinking and all that other stuff. So, you know, I wish, honestly, wish Baba Dick was around. Now, he might agree with Origin. He might think it's a beautiful film. You know, he, he would always throw you for a left, uh, a, a curveball. Like you, you, the minute you make an assumption with Dick Gregory about what he's gonna think or say, he'll automatically say the opposite. You know, so you know, as a devil's advocate kind of situation, he might even argue that that yeah, cast is 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 the key. But um, the core of hate that I see every day, and even things that are reflected in the movie origin like with India and all that other stuff, that that hierarchy is built on. Now, that that mindset may have existed prior to the colonization of that culture. I don't know enough to say it does or it doesn't, but it seems to me that it's still based on black versus white. And in most cultures that I've seen privilege is given to people that have a lighter skin tone, you know, and privilege is given to people who subscribe to the belief system of their oppressor. So, you know, I mean, I don't know. Anybody else have any thoughts on that? If you've seen the film, if you haven't seen the film, I mean, that's, that's my perspective. Um, big fans, Thaddeus Stevens and John Brown. I watch it. Yeah, it is available to watch on on streaming now. So, Don Lemon bit the hand that feed and fed him. I think they were paying him too much. I think that's what happened with him. They wanted him out because he was he was being disruptive. But they were looking at the bottom line. His ratings weren't where they used to be, and they're like, we can get somebody else in here for less money. I mean, they still had to pay him off at the end of the day, but I think Don Lemon, you know, I mean, I, look, I've been on Don Lemon's show, so I'm, I'm not going to say anything bad about Don Lemon. Don Lemon, and Don Lemon, actually, for people who know or don't know, Don Lemon was a, a Philly news anchor for years before he got the CNN job, so... You know, I, I like Don Lemon a lot. Has the chat ever seen Jesse Lee Peters? Oh, um, why did you bring up Jesse Lee Peterson? That guy. I was I was engaged by Jesse Lee and his self hating self for about a month. I fell into the wormhole of watching him say the most ignorant stuff about black people. I mean, Jesse Lee Peterson, for those who don't know, is he's got a speech impediment or something going on, and uh, he's a black guy, crusty black guy. I'm gonna say it. And he, he likes to say bad things about other black people in order to get attention. He's like uh, a male Candace Owens. You know, he's, he's, he's a nominee for the Tommy Award. Um, let us see, Dick Gregory would go to Dobbs for every year to pay respect to them. I saw an interview on Real Black. Yeah, he does. Uh, so my list to see. He's a radio host, LL, uh, crusty black. Yeah, he's crusty, like, you know, just like I looked up, uh, it was a Paul Apple. Look up Krusty in the Wikipedia, and you'll you'll see. I'm gonna type in Krusty and see what comes up. I bet you I get a picture of Jesse Lee Peterson. Yeah, I said it to all 72 people watching. I'm gonna look up Krusty. I'm gonna Google Krusty. Say crusty. I 
I gotta block the, the search. Am I wrong? Yeah, he's problematic. Um, <laughs> he's he's problematic. Um, oh, that's a, is that the word? Is that the word I used before? Problematic. So what's problematic? How do you you have a L-E-M. If you have L-E-M, what words can you spell? If you have L-E-M, what letters do you need to spell another word? Lemon. I got lemon. That's an easy one. Problematic. Lemon. Lemmings. Okay. Elm. Okay. Lemerick. Is that a word? I know limerick. Limerick, I don't know. I'll trust that as a word. Limerick. Um, L-E-M. L-E-M. M-E-L. Mel. Melon. Um, oh, limericks. Okay, yeah. Okay, it still spells it. Because you, you got the L and the M. You, you can still spell limer limerick and lem le with L-E-M. My bass player for Motorhead. Um, all right, I lost on that. Lemmy. Okay, got it. Okay. Okay. Lemmy for Motorhead. Okay. Yeah, I, I know a little bit about Motorhead. I, you know, like phlegm. Okay. That's a word. Phlegm. Coconut, a bad word. Well, I, I don't use derogatory slur for coconut, but I've heard people use that. Supplementation. Oh gosh. How, are you cheating, Voyeur? Supplementation. Okay. All right. Well, so far you've got the you've got the triple word score. Voyeur. Supplementation. Does anybody using that? Oh, you cheated. Realm. L E M. Okay. That's a good one. Uh, anybody got a $50 word? Full disclosure. Compliment. Okay. Superfluous. L-E-M. L-E-M. There's no M in superfluous. I clicked your channel for the Malcolm X archives you have. It's disappointing to see this is what you're talking about. <laughs> We're just hanging out. You have to understand, this is a family affair. I mean, these are these. I'm I'm hanging out with my friends today. If you if you if you're disappointed about this, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what 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 can I talk about that's Malcolm X related? You know, um, you know, we just we just I just did a diatribe at the risk of alienating Ava DuVernay. I, I gave my critique on her film. I, I think that was that was a little ballsy, right? I could have said, oh, yeah, go see it. It's great. And it's like, you know, I mean, to me, it didn't go hard enough. It didn't go hard enough in the paint. You know, I would have been like, I, w I wouldn't have been like pointing out Whitey, but I'm like, seems to me that that's the problem. You know, it seems, it seems it's not cast. It's this concept that some people feel like they're better than others. And they poison people's belief systems with that that idea in order for them to maintain world dominance over others, you know. And we're divided in that respect. It's not like at ground level we decided this stuff. We're born into it. You're told, hey, you know, if you look a certain way, you, you get certain privileges out of this society, you know, and, and, um, you know, we all buy into it. So I think it's, you know, that race is a social construct, which he closes that idea in Selma. I don't know if people caught that, you know, you know, like she, what's interesting, uh, in Selma, they couldn't use any of Mark, uh, Martin Luther King's actual words 
in the speeches, right? So Ava had to write everything that Martin Luther King was going to say. She couldn't just quote him. So the closing speech in the movie Selma, uh, she mentions, you know, and she may be paraphrasing some Martin Luther King, but she she introduces this idea in that, in that film that race is a social construct. And then she follows it up in origin with a more fleshed out demonstration of that. What's all the scientific word? <laughs> uh, do you think Trump Rico case with D.A. Willis? Um, problematic again, you know, the D.A. having relations with the lawyer or whatever, but... Um, why why is this guy still able to run? You know, Charles and I were talking about that. You know, like most people would be forced to drop out of a race if they had any kind of allegations directed towards them. Not even convictions. This guy, he's lost a few cases so far. And he's still out there running, selling sneakers and doing all that kind of stuff. And people are still voting for him. They, they don't see him as fraudulent. So, um. You get the government you deserve. If this guy gets in again, I don't know what's what the future's gonna hold. I don't I don't like to have my vote being held hostage with this idea that, you know, and they, they tried to play this card last time when he won. It's like, you know, if if you if you vote for Trump or if you don't vote at all, somehow the whole world is going to collapse. You know, we survived it. I mean, I don't know if we can survive another term of it because, um, you know, but, you know, I think um, Biden needs to make it really clear what he's done, what he's been able to do for the people, the people that actually vote and win the vote instead of using it as like a threat. Like if you don't vote for me, the world's in trouble. That that just seems that that's that's not playing that's playing defense. You should be playing offense at this stage of the game. What do you say to black folks who say they were better off economically with Trump? Um my feeling was that Trump took a lot of credit. Now, I know there's people watching. I'm not going to call them by name. There are people watching. We get in deep debates about this stuff. But my, from my perspective, since I'm being asked a question, and you certainly can say whatever you want in the chat, a lot of, a lot of times presidents take credit for what the previous administration did because it, it's a bureaucracy and takes time. So I think... The economy was running great before Trump, and I'd say at least the first two, if not three years of his, you know, prior to COVID hitting, I think he was he was taking credit for what Obama was doing, in my opinion. But, you know, I'm not reading the Wall Street Journal every morning either. So, I mean, if anybody has a different feeling about that, I'm welcome to hear it. Um... If you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Exactly. I mean, that's not how you win a black vote. Um, Biden is flooding the USA with illegal migrants. I don't know if that's true. I mean, who's busing them in front of people's houses and sending them places? I think it's the Republican politicians that want to create havoc on that. I mean, there's always this threat of immigration. I don't, I don't buy into that. Um, you know, like there's a lot of jobs that we're just not equipped to do now, like, and, and we need immigrants to be able to do certain jobs, you know, talk about caste system. There's certain things that Americans feel they're above and the, the, the void is filled through immigrants who are willing to work hard and become citizens and work their way up, theoretically. 
kind of historical. So I, I don't buy into that propaganda at all, that somehow because Biden's in, things are worse. Or that somebody's job is being threatened. I mean, most of the time, you know, I don't, I don't see people rushing into the country illegally to become um, whatever, whatever the middle class opportunity is or, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't see I don't see immigration as posing a threat to job security. Um, you know, the they have to work, right? Come to New York City, and you see migrants bossing. Well, I mean, they're bossing them into New York. Yeah, it's bad. It's a bad situation. They make they're making it visible. But I, well, my argument is not f f you too. My 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 argument is not that you're not that there isn't an increase in migrants coming to cities. My argument is twofold. One, if you're saying that they're posing a threat, and that's that's a conventional argument that immigrant immigrants are, are taking jobs away from good Americans, most of the time. The jobs that they're filling are jobs that you wouldn't want. And then secondly, I think they're making yeah, we could we could definitely if I understand what the what the complaint is, that government money is being used to house and feed these illegals and we're not even handling our own homeless situation among Americans. That's a big problem that I think needs to be addressed. I agree with that. But I, I don't personally feel that I, I feel that that's propaganda. What 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 you what you, uh, that you're regurgitating, you know? But I don't live in New York. I don't see it on a day to day. I don't get a sense that um, it's any different than it was the previous four years, and I don't. I don't think that building a wall is is necessary, in my opinion. But you know, um, past president. Okay, that's why I say it's a script. Both parties are in on it. Yeah, I would, I would, I would lean in that direction too, Roy. You know, it's politics. It's po it's called that for a reason. Immigration and reform has to be taken out from both sides. I love illegal. Yeah, so they're making it. They're they're weaponizing the the problem to their own advantage as opposed to trying to solve the problem. And, you know, but you know, as a person of color, you know, I also look at it like certain people are more than welcome to come. Come right in. Come right in if you look a certain way. You know, like what, you know, like, you know, the country, this country creates havoc all over the planet. Based on policies that there that we that we inst instigate, and it causes mi migration patterns to shift, and people want to come to the United States, right? But I mean, are you saying are people from the Ukraine being bused to New York and forced to live on the streets? I'm not hearing that story. Am I wrong? You know, it seems to me like people want to adopt Ukrainian babies and do all kinds of stuff because they look a certain way. Whereas, you know, if you're from South America or, or you speak a different language, you you seem to be a threat because you, you're not as easy to assimilate into the dominant culture, so. Okay. Citizens supporting immigrants don't have control over the infrastructure, lack of a place to execute the shift. Okay. I mean, I like I like the discussion. I, I like that I, I like that that topic was brought up. Yes, they're hoping the illegals and citizens to fight amongst each other. NGOs are funding these issues. A lot of people are saying boycott Tyson Foods because they replaced all their American workers with migrants. Yeah, but I mean, who's they're they're the ones that make chicken for KFC. 
So then you can't eat KFC if you want to boycott Tyson Foods, right? It's not just in the supermarket. It's where wherever they serve that chicken. I'm not necessarily willing to give up chicken, nor am I looking for a job in the in the chicken warehouse, you know, but pay more attention to the migrant situation. Well, that's going to be a big issue, and it's, it's definitely going to be a close race in the fall. It's definitely going to be a close race in the fall because of these issues. So grow your own chickens if you can. No one should be eating KFC. Interesting. Hey, Molly likes KFC. Whenever I bring it, she gets a little piece of wing. Where you at? She's back. You want? I'm going to get off in a minute. Oh, okay. She's being interesting today. That food is death. Yeah, I got to do better with my, my diet. I eat a lot of fast food, unfortunately. You know. I need somebody who can take care of my diet better than myself, who likes to cook and take care of people. I mean, not, not that, you know, I feel women should be there to take care of men. I think we should take care of each other. I'm just, I'm so lonely. <laughs> um, I'm up for reinventing the back to the land journey. I was in on the 70s, too much ice cream. Yeah, you told me about the ice cream. I, I just bought some ice cream today. Best chance to succeed, Biden or Trump. I, you know, we're at the end of the empire, Dub. Um, it's like who's going to put their foot on the gas versus who's going to try to put the brakes on as we go off this cliff called democracy. That's That's what I feel. Most of the people coming in are military-aged men and Venezuela is doing what Cuba did back in the 80s and tons of Chinese are coming in too. Yeah. Oh, here's Molly. She just came up. Speaking to... What, what are your feelings, Molly, on immigration? Molly. Yeah. What are your thoughts on immigration, Molly? Buy sugar-free ice cream. Stay away. You know what it is, MG. I don't. I don't move around enough. You know, I started off. You know, my job is very sedentary. Like you know, like it's two o'clock in the morning. Like one of my first jobs out of school. It took me a while to get the job. Actually, was as a video editor, and that's why I started to really pick up weight. Because I had I worked the night shift and I had to be there from 1 a.m. until 11 in the morning, and I had to stay up. And it was and the job was just sitting and editing video all day or all night. And that's when I first started to gain weight. And then I had health issues that put me on a medication that also increased my weight. So that's. That's when it started. People told me you have to get more active in order to burn this stuff off. I didn't do it. And, you know, if you gain five pounds a year over 10 years, that's 50 pounds. And that's basically what happens. So, you know, but, um, you know, at this point, I want to reverse it. I'm doing my best to take care of myself. Hey, Molly. Happy Monday. Very happy Monday. Says hi. She's here. All right, she's sitting still. I can paint over. You say hi. 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 Yeah. Where it says kiss you on the nose. Yeah, she's hanging out. Yeah, so... All right, I'm almost done. Any any final thoughts? We hung out for 104 minutes. Immigrants is what's destroyed the money room and empire, I'm just saying. Um, you could argue that. 
isn't weight but diabetes more veggies and less fast food you should care you should send you care packages i love veggies that's the funny thing yeah i need a wife that's probably what it is i need a i need a healthy wife somebody's gonna you know look out make sure that i'm i'm here you know i got need i need i need a reason to live I need a reason to live, you know, so caring for another person. I mean, Molly is a good reason to live, right? Uh, thank you for your archive. You're welcome. Stop all fast food now. I cooked today, but it was fast food. <laughs> I made a hamburger. You better get you an Asian girl. We talked about that in class today. Yeah, well, it's real black. I mean, I you know, I like Afro, Afro, Latina, and uh, black people. I'm not necessarily in for the Asians. Zoom to Thailand. Hamburgers are cool if you make it. Yeah, I made a very good hamburger. I should have made a cooking video. I got some really good cheese with it and... Uh, some blue cheese with it and hooked it up. Put a little butter on the bun. It came out all right. You have a reason for living. you the intellectual st stimulation. I appreciate the love. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm just joking. I'm not wallowing in any kind of pain right now. I feel really good about myself. But I, I do need to reverse when this, you know, summer. This summer, I need to walk every day and just be more active. I mean, I got into bad habits of being sedentary, you know, but Italian women are acceptable, no? If you're trying to lose weight, an Italian woman? Asians are light eaters. You need to fast. I do need to fast. That's very good. I was thinking about that because I want to get closer to God. Cut off the eating machine. I like that. Thanks for your service. Real Black is a great resource. You're welcome. You're welcome. It's Ramadan. Am, am I going to go Muslim? I like the Christian ideal of fasting. You know, that seemed to be what Baba Dick was talking about. I mean, he wasn't necessarily... Christian or religious in that respect, but um, he did a video with us where he talked about fasting and he would go off on retreats like for weeks and he talks about just how his energy aligned with um, the universe as you fast. So, you know, that's, that's, um, I'd like that experience. You know, um, I'm I'm really into different levels of consciousness and awareness and and things like that. You know, I think there's other other things that are going on in terms of energy that we're just not perceptive of unless we shift our vibration. So it's an it's about helping the less fortunate, being aware of the abundance you have to be thankful for. Yeah, I, I had a conversation yesterday. I was not with my Ghanaian friend and it just shifted my perspective, you know, it's like, you know, I can sit here in Delaware all day and get depressed easily because I'm not around other people. I don't see how other people perceive what I do. I think I got caught up a lot with the school and trying to be really good at that. And I lost sight of just, you know, who am I and where, where I'm at what I'm trying to do with um, the next four or five years. And, you know, I, I, I don't like to do it, but I caught myself feeling sorry for myself. I caught myself feeling sorry for myself. And when I talked to the guy, he was like, man, you, you got so much going on. You, should, you shouldn't even worry about that. I said, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, but somehow... Something I don't I don't have 
the perspective yet to really um, go get, you know, figure out what it is I want to do next and go after it. So I've been not coasting, but lackadaisical, that's another word. I've been a little lackadaisical the last couple of years as I try to reset and pivot, you know, what it is I want to do. You know, the purpose, the direction that I want to take next, you know. So, like I said, I caught myself feeling sorry for myself, and I, I didn't like that. So, all day to day, I was doing what you just said. I, I've been really grateful for um, where things are right now and appreciative of everything that's come my way. Appreciative of you guys for hanging out and just trying to look at the glass more optimistically as being half full. So, but that, that didn't happen until yesterday. I really, you know, it wasn't a, a severe bout of depression or anything like that, but I, I just, I, I just felt, I allowed myself to feel like a victim and that, that's, that wasn't fair to my, my psyche. It's all right. Sometimes good things take time to enjoy teaching. I love teaching. Um, what's interesting, Elizabeth, about teaching is just how old I am. God, these kids are so young. They, they're they just like babes in the woods. They, they haven't been exposed to very much. And it feels good to be able to share things. That's always the crux of my being. My core is I love to share. So being able to share with young people and get a, a check at the end of the month for it is always good. So when you're getting older, you have to think about your future. I'm trying. I'm trying, Mimi. It's a good thing, pounding a purpose. Left the U.S. for five months. And I lost 20 pounds without even trying. Yeah, I want to I want to travel again so I can um, eat better. America will kill you with the food. Because it's not the abundance of food, it's it's the quality of the food. It's, it's full of crap that's bad for you. So yeah, if you're on an American diet, you probably it's probably costing you 10 years out of your life as opposed to eating elsewhere, in my opinion. I need your help marketing 109. That can be your new direction. Work with me. I see 109. Well, DM me or send me an email and tell me more about what you're doing. Meditation can fix that in less than two minutes. Dartmouth. Hey, I took a meditation class. Stagnant. Yeah, I was stagnant for a while. I mean, now the summer's coming. I feel like I got some things to do. How's my vitamin D and B testosterone levels? You don't have to tell me, but that could be a factor. I don't take extra vitamins for anything. But yeah, sunlight, that's vitamin D, right? Vitamin D is sunlight. I don't get out enough. I don't walk around enough. This is good. I learned a lot from your film analysis and archive. Yeah, we want to do more. We definitely want to do more. Charles and I, that was our conversation today. What can we do this summer to help um, grow the archive of um, things and, and get some stuff into schools now that I'm connected to schools? I, I can see how some of our content can play um, to different schools and, and teachers. I know Charles likes to talk to students, so we're trying to get that together. The glass is always 100% full, just sometimes filled with air. Okay, I like that. That's a good one. Got to pack early. Okay, fruit. Oh, okay. Take care. Be safe. I'm going to get off in a minute myself, too come to Appalachia and make a film about the reparations thing going on here. We'll feed you barbecue. Okay. I, I got to make a film about something. I got to, I got to figure that out. Chicken nuggets have 65 ingredients. Wow. I need to take supplements. Vitamin D and a multivitamin. Sunlight and dark green vegetables. Okay. Big Mac can stay on the shelf for years and still look the same. That should, you should not be eating that. That's true. Pesticides and GMOs. So we covered three topics. We covered, well, we didn't get to reparations. We covered health, Tyler Perry, and um, 
we did some Scrabble. So. It was a good hang. Watch Godfrey's um, Club Shay Shay, if you haven't already. Molly's asleep now. I'll pan over to her. She's wanting to go to sleep. Hey, Molly. Yeah, she's knocked out. She sleeps a lot. Uh, so much for the contemporary art world as well. Would love some coverage. Yeah, I just have to get my vibe back. I mean, Neil is right. I mean, we should be doing more stuff on Real Black 2 that's original. and um, But the pivot really is just to get off the YouTube N-I-P-P-L-E. You know, I don't, I really don't like the fact, you know, I hate it that all this work that we did to try to bring people together through knowledge and black history um, has been completely co-opted by YouTube. They profit from it every single minute. They're making money off of the work that I did, that me and Charles put together, this archive. They're, they make the money and they don't split it off. And there's no explanation of how to fix it, you know? So that, that irritates me to no end. So the last thing I wanna do with the rest of my life is to continue to feed that monster. You know, what, what I really want to do is, like you said, platforms, Pierre, I want to take the visibility that we have here and parlay it into the next thing. Um, it's not about censorship. It's, it's intellectual property. You know, who owns what, who controls what, who's able to benefit from it, who isn't, you know? So... You know, had I known sooner that we were violating their laws and had they reached out and said something prior to that, we could have fixed it. But, you know, it was a pandemic. We built up a huge following and I'm grateful for that. Um, but it leaves you in a lurch. L-U-C, L-U-R-C-H, lurch. It leaves you in a lurch when suddenly you get cut off from all of that. And then also, you know, I'm a Virgo, so it, it makes you feel guilty. Uh, an incredible amount of guilt because I've, I don't like, you know, it's really deeply rooted. I don't want to get too deep into psychology, but, um, you know, I have an immense fear of rejection and I always want to do the right thing, right? So to be rewarded, in a sense, is doing the right thing. And then all of a sudden, you're getting a slap on the wrist. And you're being told, hey, what you're doing is wrong, but not so wrong that we're not going to continue to profit from it. So it's like a, it was, it was, it shook me up. Start a newsletter if you don't have one. See, the thing the thing about all that, how do I reach people? You know, I'm reaching them, 72 people here. Out of, we get 3.8 million views right now a month. So, the math ain't mathing. <laughs> you know, we, we have 11,000 new subscribers every month. Right. So I, I don't go around saying hit the notification bell, but, you know, if it's like round it down to 10,000 new subscribers a month. Right. So that's 120,000 new people in the last year that have decided to subscribe to Real Black. Now, I know they're not all going to be up at 2.30 in the morning. Not everybody's gonna be interested in what I have to say, but 
the number should be a little higher, I think, than 70. And that's where I have a problem with YouTube. Um, creators on all these social media platforms have no way to access their audience base. And then that's when I have to align. I don't agree with everything Kanye West says, but his last interview that he did with Big Boy, he pointed that out. He's like, he's talking about streaming and how people are holding up their plaques saying, hey, I got a billion streams, but they're still living at their mom's house because the streaming companies are taking all the money for themselves. And that's basically what's going on with Real Black. They send me a plaque. I was really proud, you know, million subscribers. You know, it got me out of my mom's house and I was grateful for that. But they're the ones making all the profit off of the, the, the intellectual content that I mined for them. They're the ones that are reaping all the benefits at this point. And it's very frustrating. You know, I can't lie about that. What's the alternative to YouTube? Well, I mean, I think that time for me is past. I mean, we, we galvanized because of the pandemic. I mean, we're never gonna see a time like that again, hopefully in our lifetime where everybody's forced to be home and forced to discover stuff. Unfortunately, the way the algorithm works is that black content gets pushed down and it favors spamming content. That may be true, you know, but at the same time, this, this is a very viable platform. You know, I mean, you can't, you can't, I'm, again, the numbers don't lie. Um, nothing changed from the time we got demonetized to today in terms of our views. I mean, now we may have peaked when I was putting up content regularly, we were getting on average about 13 million views a month and we're down to 3.2 because I'm not putting up new content. But the subscribers still are the same numbers. Like we, we were averaging about 13,000 subscribers a month and now this past month, we had 11,200 and something new subscribers a month, right? So again, that's 120,000 people that are new to the channel, um, you can't tell me that they're not interested in just being on a live or seeing what's going on. That's the phone's ringing. Something's going on. Somebody's got a car pumping music. Japanese channel shows me, well, it's channels for everything. If everyone sent me a dollar, yeah, that'd be fantastic. You know, it's a problem. It's a problem. I mean, and I appreciate you, MG, for sending a dollar, you know? Yeah, that was the thought process. 11000 a month would be great if everybody, you know, but not everybody's going to pay. They're not conditioned to pay. The advertising should support it. And that's, that's what I, that was my belief at the time when we were posting. It's like, okay, I'll put this rare video up. I'll take the money that comes in from the channel and I'll look for things. I'll find stuff to share and post it on the channel and, and I'll, I'll suffer through the copyright strikes. I, I had no clue, I was blindsided um, from this concept that, uh, of uh, reused content. Cause I, I, it seemed to me like everybody was reusing content on YouTube. So, you know, it, you know it, it's two years ago. My mom's been gone two years. Also, so I think, you know, that that was a double whammy in my life, you know, losing my mom very shortly after the demonetization took a toll. So um, it took a couple of years to recover and, and we'll be coming back stronger. But again, I just don't, I don't want to uh, rumble. Okay. I just don't want to uh, keep giving them, uh, you know, like let them make money off my back. You know, I'm trying to figure out another way to make money outside of this situation. 
Well, we don't have a membership. Very mm -hmm. happy. We can become a member through Patreon, spend $3 a month or $5 a month or $10 a month and support the channel that way. But when you, channel one, which has the most viewers, when you're demonetized, all that super chat and money and all this stuff gets taken away. So life may not be perfect, bro, but you are a legend in black history. Just know that. I'm aware. I'm aware. Some, you know, again, I, I caught myself feeling sorry for myself and I had to stop that. I just had to tell my brain, no, you've done this, you've done that. You're just in a pivot mode and um, Molly cares. Oh, yeah, you should see her. All right. They're not giving you donations, lawyer time. Well, you know, I just as soon shut everything down, but then what does that do for the people? You know, they're just discovering us. So, you know, you gotta figure there's another act coming. You know, I like that name. Pierre Lafou. Pierre Lafou, you, can you two be sued from unfair practices, racist practices? Well, you know, here's the thing. Hang on. I'm just looking for something. I thought I had Pierre LaFou. Yeah. Oh, Perot. Okay. Perot LaFou. You spelled it differently. Um, no, the, what was the question? Um, my condolences for your loss. Oh, thank you. Yeah, my mom. Um, too important to us. Don't give up. Thank you. And okay. Can you two be sued? That was, that's what we we're talking about. See, the issue with that, they're very sneaky because, um, you know, once a year or twice a year, they'll send out an update and they basically say it's um, terms and conditions, right? So if you they basically say, all right, you can't access your account or check things unless you check this box or, you know, we need, we have updates to our terms and services, if you want to continue to get your AdSense payment, you've got to check this box, right? And you just check the box. But, you know, one time I read what was in that agreement and basically you're being forced to agree to things that if you didn't agree to them, you could probably sue them and win. But because you check that box... If you took them to court and said, hey, you did this, you did that, you did the third, they'll say, well, you agreed to this, so therefore we can't be sued. You know, it's a private entity. They, they have every right to do that. So about a year ago, they changed their terms and conditions to the, to the extent where um, that happened, you know, so it just led to my frustration, but it was still um, something is basically like, look, if you want us to keep paying you, you you have to basically agree that we're God, you know? That's that's how it works with, with places like this. Um, salacious about our people because of times we lived in. I'm sick of YouTube and showing a line black hat because it's a slander for clicking views. Contracts are made for them, exactly. Yeah, so you're making a contract. And whether you agree to it or not, in order for it to stay continuous, like they'll, they know what they're about to get in trouble for and they'll just put it in a little clause and, and then you check it off and then it is what it is. But um, yeah, so it's been two and a half hours I've been talking. 
and Molly's knocked out. I'm still awake, but I, I'm gonna watch. Um, I'll tell you what I'm gonna watch. Uh, if I if I can stay up later, I might shut it down. Goodbye, Uncle Tom is coming out in 4K, and they sent me a screener. I appreciate that, Lenny. Um, so I gotta finish watching Goodbye, Uncle Tom. And um, sounds like corporate narcissism is unavoidable for most folks. Oh, hey, Lynette, I'll look for your cash app. I, I'll definitely send you a hug. Um, I appreciate your support. But yeah, you know, don't cry for me, Argentina. You know, I'm living a good life and I'm enjoying what I do. And, um, you know, I'm very spiritual minded at this point. So I know everything happens for a reason. So uh, I'm looking forward to the next phase. Oh, Putney Swope, yeah. That's, that's, we just watched that in class about three weeks ago. Quiet on the set. That's what I need to watch. Thank you, Elizabeth. That's the uh, document about the Nickelodeon kids being abused. And it's on HBO Max. So I uh, talked to my students today about that. I need to watch that this weekend. And then I need to see... I mean, tomorrow's Friday. I think Saturday morning. Maybe tomorrow morning I can go for a show. I got to see what time. The Magical Negroes movie. I want to see that. Oh, brace yourself. Quiet on the set we're talking about. About the uh, kids being abused by adults. The kid actors on Nickelodeon. All the secrets that they... Behind the scenes salacious stories about Nickelodeon kids from the 90s and the 2000s, so. Don't. <laughs> okay. American Fiction. I've seen American Fiction. Oh, don't go see the ma Magical Negroes? Is that what you're talking about, Pierre? Magical Negroes. I, I feel like I don't like to criticize things unless I've seen them. And if I can get in and get out for seven bucks, uh, um, I'm inclined to go check it out. But uh, yeah, I'm not looking forward to it at all. Oh, you saw it? Oh, let me see. I got, okay, you woke up. Larry, thank you. Thank you. For the cash app, Larry. Uh, so I should do more of these. Um, I appreciate it. So that's pretty much all I got. I wish I could play some music or something, but then that gets blocked. Uh, let's try this again. I appreciate your material. Keep up the great work. My family and I are very familiar with Brother Malcolm's family as we Our Grenadian heritage mom. Oh, that's what you meant. I thought you were talking about my mom being from Grenada. I was like, I'm not sure if that's true. Good channel. Know more about Nickelodeon and Disney. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. I enjoy hanging out. You know, honestly, it's been a long time since we did a live. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. But more, more to the point, it's just so, I'm so appreciative I was seeing how many people are staying up late because this is an odd time for a lot of people. And um, it's good to see so many familiar names. Uh, yeah, I'll try and get on earlier. Um, maybe Saturday after I see Magical Negroes, I'll come on. Uh, I'm a little caught up with class work this week. So I can do another live this weekend. So probably... Saturday, a reading time. Pierre, what are you reading? And then we're going to go. Oh, it's only 11.30. You're on the, you're on the West Coast. It's, it's 2.33 here. Just pulled over into a truck stop in Denver. Okay. Where are you headed? You're in Denver. Things to do in Denver. God bless you. Yeah. Okay, well, be safe on the road. 
AG play and get the, get to wherever you're going safe. I wish I was traveling tonight. It's cold here on the East Coast. I don't know how cold it is in Denver, but it's a mountain area, so I know it's probably a little chilly at night. Loading in Denver, going to Nebraska. Oh, see so a trucker. Okay. I love it. I my attention span's too short to do long, long, long hauls. But I love truck stops. Um, the the last place you can get DVDs now. Oh, the Paul Mooney. Oh, I love Paul Mooney. I mean, Paul Mooney was a he was a piece of work. But and I regret not pursuing more interviews with him. And you don't stop, shoot, keep on, shoot the shot. Okay. All right, people waiting for me to get off. Molly. Hang on. I'll let her say goodbye. If I can hold it down. You see her? You sleeping? You sleep? There's a guy in Nebraska, a guy in Denver going to Nebraska. He's saying hi. Okay. All right. Well, wherever you are, be safe. Finding me. Yeah, I got to get that. Is that good? Cash up coming. Thank you, Lynette. Um, yeah, well, wherever you are, be safe. Um, I'll try and come back on Saturday a little earlier. Uh, maybe I can get a guest on. Maybe Well, Charles, he's going to be busy until Monday. I know that. But um, yeah, Finding Me is on my Audible. I, get, I subscribe to Audible. And I have to pick a book for this month. So um, I love Isla Davis's voice and her honesty. And I know she narrates her own audio book. So I might check that one out. Um, and then I picked up the, um, Sly Stone memoir, but I haven't read it yet. I'm, I just, I'm just so overloaded with classwork. It's easier for me to listen to a book than it is to read one. Cause I have a long commute, relatively long commute into school. So I'm listening to a lot of podcasts and, um, audio books right now more so than um, actually sitting down to read. But um, yeah, all right. Have, I, have you read The Call of Money? I'm not even sure what that is. Mahogany, oh, Dark Month is back, okay. I think I think my, my end of the night, I'll put the Nickelodeon doc on because that's something I can fall asleep on and come back to. Art of My Mind by Bell Hooks. I've got a little bell hooks corner in my library. I go back to her quite a bit. I miss her. Uh, the Color of Money White, Black Banks and the Racial Wealth Gap. I can imagine what that's a book, of, what that's about. Sankofa, another great, absolutely. That needs to be on 4K. They restored it. It's on Netflix. I mean, he got a nice check for that. But, um, you know, putting on a 4K disc is not going to make as much money as putting on Netflix. Sankofa's great. Um, oh, yeah, she did win a Grammy. She's an EGOT now, right? Viola Davis. Okay. All right. So we're at that time. Um, I'm so glad we had this time together. You know, how that goes, the Carol Burnett show theme. So, you have a meet and greet in New York. Um, I want to screen in New York, maybe Juneteenth. We might bring Riverbend up for a screening in Queens. Um, I got to work on that, see if they want to do that. We have a relationship with the Queens Public Library. So, um, you know, we might do something in New York around Juneteenth. But um, 
right now it's just about getting the school work done, get through the semester, and then we can come on more frequently. I, I'll bring Charles on soon because I know you guys miss him. Yeah, you're from Queens. That that library, you know how tough it is and finding parking in Queens. It's, that place is so gentrified. Um, the Langston Hughes Library, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you got to park like 10 blocks away if you're not careful from the library. Sometimes you can get lucky and get a spot across the street, but, you know, um, that's the only thing I don't like that I'm parking in Corona. Exactly, Daria, you know. You know Corona. A Columbia restaurant across the street and um, Linden's chocolate chip cookies you can get in Queens. You can't get them in Philly too easily. But whenever I'm in Queens or Brooklyn, I'll get I'll go to um, Crust. What's it, what's it called? Something crust. Where they have the Jamaican beef patties. The restaurant, crust. I forget the name of it, crust. And then um, I'll pick up about 10, Golden Crust, thank you. Golden Crust Bakery. Golden Crust Jamaican Bakery. And I'll get myself a, a couple beef patties and a chicken patty or a veggie patty and I'll stop and I'll get like maybe five packs of uh, Linden's chocolate chip cookies and then I'll get in the car and I'll drive back to Philly and I'll, I'll have to put the cookies in the back seat or else I'll eat them all on the way down and I'll be munching on beef patties all the way back to Philly. And um, I used to stop at Roy Rogers on the turnpike. But I stopped doing that because it's gotten so garbagey. It's it's so freaking bad now. Yeah, I don't know if anybody knows Roy Rogers restaurants, but they used to have the best roast beef and really good chicken. But Oh, cocoa bread. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Golden Crust is like McDonald's and NYC. You got to Go to a non-chain Jamaican spot. Yeah, well, that's true. I'm, you know, but then the thing about Jamaican restaurants, everybody got an attitude. You talk about immigration. No, I've never been to a Jamaican restaurant where they're happy to serve you. Like whoever trains the people that work at um, Chick-fil-A needs to start training people that work at Jamaican restaurants because they act like they're doing you a favor just by being alive. Like they don't, they don't want to help you at all. And they're, they're doing a big, yeah, the shade. They don't like, they're doing a favor and you're spending money and they're acting like they're doing you a favor just by being in the room. So the attitude, the more the attitude, the better the food. No. They'll mess up your order better, more worse than KFC. You got to look in that bag and double check because yeah, the fu is right on. Yeah, they don't want they don't want they don't want you to have a good experience. No jerk chicken at Chick Fil A. Now, see, I bet you, if if Chick Fil A put out a jerk chicken, the lines would double. Mark my words, one day Chick-fil-A is going to do a jerk and it'll be the best of both worlds. You'll get your Jamaican food and good service at the same time. Yeah, they do something with that chicken and the oxtails and the um, cabbage. They can hook it up to Jamaican restaurants, but yeah, they, they don't really... I'm surprised they open on time. You know, but they do. I mean, they're very good business people. Rice and peas, salt fish. No, my rice and peas. What I'll do, there's a place I'll, I'll shout out Jamaican D's on Shelton Avenue in Philly. That's my favorite Jamaican spot. And I get the stew beef 
rice and peas, cabbage and collard greens. That's and mac and cheese. Like sometimes I'll replace the stew, the rice and peas with mac and cheese. And it's just like a heart attack waiting to happen, but it's so delicious. So Aki and salt fish is the worst meal ever. <laughs> All right, I got everybody's mouth watering. All right, so now everybody's gonna go eat this late and I'm gonna go watch the Nickelodeon documentary, right? So, uh, oh, champagne, I got some, oh, no sex in the champagne room. I was gonna say champagne cola. I have a bottle of champ. Um, was it Jamaican cola champagne? I have in the fridge. Wendy's chicken. Wendy's chicken sandwich. No, it was um, Popeye's chicken sandwich craze. Chick Fil A will never have. Let them. I'm telling you. What is today? March twenty first. I'll put it on record. If Chick-fil-A started making jerk sauce in those little packets like they do, and then they tell you to buy it in the supermarket, they their stock would go up tenfold if they if they made a jerk chicken sauce for their for their sandwiches. Red wine. I have a bottle of Josh over there. It was recommended to me. I don't really drink wine. But I keep I keep wine. I have um some Francis Ford Coppola wine that I just keep for display. And then I have a bottle of Josh uh, Red and a, a bottle of uh, Josh Chardonnay in case uh, people come over. But I mean, I'm, I'm open to suggestion, but that was, it was $10 and it was something that somebody recommended to me. All right, well, MJ, I'm gonna go. All right, thank you. All right. Peace and blessings. Love you all. Good night. All right. Bye. Drive on, Jen. Thank you. Bye, 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 bye. Bye.